Hey, yo, what's going on, Nomads and Drifting Podcast listeners? I'm Brian. And I'm Monica. And welcome to our podcast, The Backspace Nomads. This is episode 44 of the podcast, and we're recording on January 18th, 2018. Monica, what's up? How you been? I've been delightful. The other day, I had like a little, it's not time hop, but just a memory. And it said that we were starting our, our very first, we're recording our very first episode oh my god how exciting that is this is our one year anniversary isn't it yeah i was on facebook and it told me like i don't know if it's is it our one year i might be it told me though that we were recording it and and i was really excited and tonight i came on and i still felt that same excitement dude <laughs> just like I love the you, man. Thing, oh, stop I love you. I love like one you. of us has got to hold it together okay okay Okay, it'll be me. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. So, <laughs> one year ago, we said, <laughs> this should be so easy. This is how far behind we are on podcasts. Like, we should be at episode 52 and we're at 44. We had shit to do, Brian. We were doing really fun shit. Stop trying to shame me. I'm not. And you. You're shaming us. I was we're doing, doing great. We are doing great. It's very successful. It's just, I know, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, this is not, is this a year? It should be, oh, 44. Yeah. <laughs> um, close enough. Close enough. What a what a wonderful year of podcasting, doing this 43 times before, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite glorious. It's been quite glorious. I'm proud of us, though. We've been doing this for a year. Yes. Like, that's, I, I feel like that's a feat, you know? Mm-hmm. We, we, we have transitioned beyond it just being a an idea and it's now a part of our lives and you know we have plans for moving forward and and new ideas that are going to be coming out and i just think it's pretty badass that we've we've been doing this for that long yeah like i i think that's kind of a um like a hallmark and a reason of us and why i really like working with you it's just like mm-hmm. we're gonna keep doing this and we're like whatever it is we're gonna tackle it we're gonna make it happen yep and uh, we've done that goddamn 43 times. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, all the like the different versions of the show, you know, remember back when we used to do weekly reviews? Yeah. Time to yeah. by. Well, yeah, the show has changed a lot over time, too. And it's conti- it's going to keep continuing to as we like find our find our happy place. Mm-hmm. We, we understand our happy place a lot more, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we want to just settle in there. You know, we really want to keep improving and everything. And I don't know, it's, it's been an adventure for sure. I love it. Like I'm, I'm really proud of us. I've enjoyed it, but let's get into uh, the show this week. Have you looked at the Nintendo Labo? Uh, I have looked at the Nintendo Labo. <laughs> I like how you're emphasizing Labo. Labo. I think it sounds a little, uh, a little sexy. Labo. A little Labo? Is it kind of uh, like Nintendo's <laughs> getting a little frisky? Yeah, but um, yeah, I checked it out. I, it's it's really not what I would have expected. Nope. It is in my wildest dreams. It's completely Nintendo in that aspect, you know. Like mm-hmm. Nintendo makes you think like, what's the next thing in gaming, right? Like VR and like all that stuff. And then Nintendo's like, no, we're uh, you're gonna build build stuff out of cardboard. That's what you're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, the Nintendo Labo is a DIY creation platform that combines the magic the magic of Nintendo Switch and your DIY imagination. Uh, you can like, here's the crazy thing: they send you these like cardboard cutouts. The first pack is like $70, right? It's kind of expensive. Mm-hmm. But then you can build all these different things. A 13-piece uh, key piano, a fishing pole, a motorbike, and then you can actually play with them. Like, yeah. in what world do you think that was going to happen? <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like uh, there have been a handful of children's toys gain, uh, more towards you know, crafting, um, development, um, computer software, engineering, Mm -hmm. people have gotten a lot smarter, uh, as far as developing 
objects or, or toys for children. And I feel like what Nintendo is capitalizing on here is that, you know, there is still a huge um, industry out there that is that is trying to make toys smarter. Right. And you already have such an audience with video games, hands down, that if you can introduce, it almost feels like as weird as it sounds, because I know they're going to make money off of it, but almost feels like charity work in a sense, because it's getting kids to participate in something that they're already enjoying in a different way. Yes. It's having them use their hands and crafting. And I really love that and designing mm -hmm. and and I love that. I really like that. And I think it's important and it's, and it surprised me a lot, but I, it makes sense to me. Um, I'm excited about it. I think it, I think it's really rad. I do too. And completely out of the left field when I, when I first saw it and everything you're describing, like building your own stuff, it almost felt like Legos to me in a way, like you can mm -hmm. get all these different pieces and then put them together. And I can't wait to see the ridiculous thing people are going to come up with. Because like you're able to just sit there and take all these little tiny pieces, I guess, and then put them together in your own way. Because they have ways you put them together for your games and stuff. But what ways can you kind of like how people do like Ikea hacks, you know, like, well, I'm gonna take a table from here and the legs mm -hmm. of this and put together. And now you're going to have your little Labo hack and have fun with that. Well, also, the the thing is, these kits, like if you if you make the the RC car, I guess you shouldn't call it an RC car, but if you make the car, you're basically sticking the switch controllers like in this car that you create and the vibration of the controllers allows the car to move forward left and right. But there's mm -hmm. also, it, it's combined with a chip that the switch reads in order to give you instructions on how to actually put the car together and then how to move it around. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if the DIY has the element yet. Um, I don't know if that's going to be included to you where, where you can custom create um, the software to do something special. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to include that. Um, they definitely just launched this yesterday and I don't think too much information is out there about it. Yeah. Uh, I think that would be really smart though. Yeah. Is if you can if you can go in and actually program something and they make it simple enough that you can program uses, um, like even like vibrate when I press this button. Yeah. And then you can create your own templates. It's just so like I'm excited to see what they do with it because that's just that's that's perfect. It's perfect for kids. Yep. It's the perfect toy for children to yep. learn and start learning programming and start getting involved, you know? Yep. And then for all the artsy people, like you can color on them, like put stickers on all this stuff, customize it however you want. Like I mm -hmm. wish this was around when I was a kid. I like I seen that and I was like, man, like I used to do stuff like that, you know? I used to like build a like a little spaceship and then take my controller underneath it and then play Star Fox and stuff. Like people can yeah. do that with this. Yeah, I did. All right. I wanted to be a little uh, space adventurer. I That's cool. I wanted to be one of the Star Foxes. You sound way cooler than me. I was like trying to, I thought I was finding clay in this, the um, sandbox and really it was just cat turds. <laughs> well. You know, teach their own. Yeah. Maybe you can uh, build cat turds into a Nintendo Labo <laughs> no, for yourself. <laughs> Uh, but it, it got me thinking, what 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 could you do with these Nintendo Labos? Like, what what could be your own creations that you make, and like games that you like? We can design whole games around experiences and have these Labos be built into it. So I was thinking today, and I kind of got a little bit of a list of some stuff, and I wanted to share them with you. Uh, kind of workshop. I will this stuff. accept this these this list. I got my notepad. We're gonna workshop this. Uh, my first game. The Nintendo Family Thanksgiving 2018. What? Okay, the no, I Nintendo heard it. Nintendo Family Thanksgiving no, I, 2018. I, I knew you were going to do that. Um, so you can build these little toy cons, at the, as they're calling them, that's Nintendo's words, to play with grandma's listening ear. You can... Hold up the uh, Nintendo thing and a little cardboard switch to your ear and like, hello, and keep turning it. Also, you can uh, simulate Uncle Robin's uh, drinking habit. 
to where you can stick the Joy-Con what? into a cardboard cutout of an alcohol bottle and drink. That could be a little mini game for yourself, no? You don't like that? I And it doubles as a real brown bag. Uncle Robin could just walk around and no one knows he's taking the sauce. Okay. Next one, the turkey stuffer. We can build a cardboard turkey and then with the Joy-Con, start stuffing the turkey. That could be a little mini game for the kids, you know? <laughs> that sounds like the worst fucking game in the world. All of these sound so bad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I thought it'd be good. Okay. My next game. <laughs> <laughs> the NASCAR Spectator, first edition. <laughs> okay, first ed- oh, first edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're gonna have more editions Daniel. after this one. Daniel, um, the first mini game. Watch the cars go around. You can build nice little uh, a nice little like you know eyeglasses. Attach the Joy-Con to the top of it, and then the mini game is you left to right, right to left. All right, left to right. Right to left, left to right. You know your head's going back and forth. You don't... Yeah. Okay. okay. Second one. Okay. This one's for the two-handed, the multitaskers of the life. Okay. Uh, the turkey leg and oversized beer to wash your misery away. Uh, misery away mini game. So now here's what you're thinking. How's that going to work? Your turn. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you. One of your games is stuffing a turkey. Uh-huh. Your other game is a turkey leg. One of your games is drinking. Now you got this other game that's okay. Keep well, going. You can mix and match. That's the part of the labos. You know, you can okay take the turkey leg off the the, the family Thanksgiving game and use it in the NASCAR one. Now all right, you're, all right. You're twisting it and you're eating it in and out with the turkey leg, hitting the beverage, joy counting it. You know what I mean? How are you going to market this to children? It's the South. They do this shit. They love it. Oh, okay. Oh my. Um, th- that's that's about it for my games. Um, <laughs> well, I think you should just go and apply. You think to Nintendo? I think they. I think you've got some some solid um, thought processes there. And when you go and apply, please bring a camera so Ooh. I can see their reaction. Um, and if you end up getting kicked out um, or there is a scuffle. Um, give me a call and I will get you out of, uh, whatever predicament you're in. Thank you. Um, I'll wrap my cell phone in like a cardboard thing so I can even show them that. Like, look, I'm, my friend's giving me out of predicament mini game. <laughs> oh, no. You think that'll no. work? God damn it. I just want to be a game designer. You know me. You know my passions. Yeah, I do. Um, you might be a good game designer. I don't know if you're a good... <laughs> I don't know how uh, Labo is going to, how you are with that yet. We'll have to see. we got to see what people are going to come out with. Damn it. Um, yeah, I, I, it's a good, it was a good shot. Right. I mean, mine would, mine would probably just it, nowhere near as creative um, as yours. Uh, mine would just probably be like animal kingdom and you create different animals and you can have them fight one another like hippo versus <laughs> Hippo versus lion, just have them vibrate towards one another, <laughs> knock into one another until one of them falls over or something cool. like that. Um, but you know, is nothing now that now that I'm thinking about on long your train of thought, you know, you could have the um I don't know, uh errand day. Ooh. There's yeah. a hot one right there. Yeah, yeah. Errand you know, day. balance your checkbook, you know. Yeah. You yeah, like you use the card. Yeah. <laughs> is that too literal yeah um, see i like that i like where your head's at my my other one I, I didn't get a full game out of it would like be like a, playing as a librarian shushing people so you hear you go Shh, you gotta hold the joint count up and then oh speak wow into you it don't even like, need the labo for that though you could just start doing that now well that's not gaming oh okay sorry my bad i don't even know i don't know what's gaming anymore I don't know what's gaming anymore. Yo, Monica, get on board with the Labos, all right? Okay. I guess we'll go into the good and the bad of the indie for the week. (laughs) 
The Good, The Bad, and The Indie is a segment on the show where we take a look at all the game releases for the week and give you our opinions on what games you should play, the ones you should avoid, and the indie games that need to be on your radar. On this episode, we're looking at games released between January 14th and January 20th. Monica, what's our good for the week? What's the name of it? Our good for the week is a game called Hyper Universe. It's got mixed reviews on Steam right now. It was published by Nexon America and Company and the developers Sea Wave Soft and Company. Um, and it's a free to play. Yeah. Uh, Hyper Universe. I love this description. Leave the grind and start the brawl. Hyper Universe definitely combines action packed combat and team based strategic gameplay. With an outrageous cast of characters assembled from every corner of the galaxy. Prepare for a game experience that's out of this world. Ooh. <clears throat> so it's a, well, you can play against AI, but it's a four four versus four player um, game. Uh, they call it, it's been coined as partially like a MOBA. I don't, it seems weird to be a MOBA, guy, but I guess it is. Yeah. It's just. Um, and it's, it's a, it's a fun, casual, I would say almost like, um, super smash brothers type style where you're just using quirky, weird ways to beat one another up. Mm -hmm. Um, you take down monsters, minions, defense towers, and you're, you're trying to conquer the enemy team's base to, for victory. Uh, but it, it seems fast paced, uh, definitely fun, great art styles, Mm -hmm. uh and and there's over 40 playable characters um so this game in general it's free to play right now there aren't a lot of in-game purchases you can get the gear that you want from the coins by playing apparently the this uh publishing team is is or well known for eventually um introducing or i'm sorry the developer is well known for introducing in-game content where the only way you're actually good later is by if you make in-game purchases, but it's not like yeah. that yet. So, yeah. we, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at it as it stands right now. Um, and the, the funny thing is that a ton of the mixed reviews for this game, and it's another reason why I wanted to promote it a little bit here, because <laughs> it's, it's the playable characters um, there. This game has gotten, a ton of heat because of censorship. Mm. They have censored titties. God and damn. and people are outraged to the point where they participated in helping give advice and thought processes on the game as they were building it. And the community is like, you didn't listen to us. We didn't want those titties covered up anymore. Why would we you? want it? <clears throat> we wanted them out and proud and large and in charge mm -hmm. and how dare you not listen to us who cares about the other maybe 200 things that they listen to the community on and then they decided you know what we want to go ahead we're going to go ahead and in the western world we're going to go ahead and make these these boobs not look as like out there on some of these characters you they still got them i mean it's not like they're concave or anything but <laughs> But they covered them up a little bit. And, yeah, they and got people some convex are, titties in this game. And people are pissed, pissed about the fact that some of the cleavage got covered. So I felt like that was a really unfair reason, mm -hmm. um, especially since it's not like somebody else came in and did it. This is like this is the own company. They they decided they wanted to do this with their own artwork. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, no, you can't make that decision. That's the worst decision you could ever make. We're going to poo-poo your game <laughs> and no one will buy it. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen you that teed off on a game that we're like putting in the good section <laughs> ever. Like, I'm not teed off about the game. Yeah, I'm teed the, off the, about the community. community that's yeah, like, sure. You didn't listen to us. That's it. I'm going to sabotage you. It sounds like the worst type of relationship. Yeah. Uh, no, that is ridiculous. I don't, I mean, I, I, I understand that it's happening because we know the community that we play in, you know, there are these like kids who feel like they have to, uh, go so opposite of what kind of is expected. Like, Oh, they're covering up boobs, whatever. And then they 
go so furious about it because there's this whole anti-social justice warrior movement, you know? Uh, right. And they feel like they're doing a service for the rest of us by taking up the good fight of covering up, you know, I don't know, 10 pixels worth of I digital would be boobs. curious. I'd love to know. I would love to know how many of the people complaining about this complain about boobs on Twitch. Oh, <laughs> you think they're the ones? I think I, I would. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even want to make that assumption. I'm curious to know. Yeah, I'm curious to know. Just because it's like, what are we, you know, like, we got to cover them up. We got to take them out. We got to, like, what do you just leave them alone? The company wanted to cover them up a little bit more. You know, other games have gotten heat for this type of thing. Personally, I don't care one way or the other. Right. But but they wanted to do that. Let them make that decision. And you don't have to try to just sabotage the, the game that you at one point enjoyed until there was only two inches of cleavage instead of 16. Yeah especially in a game that is like such a unique take on the genre and like kind of bending what the genre should be and like blending things together and really taking a risk as a developer, even though they're putting it out for free to play, they intend to make money. This is not a tried and tested format for the genre of MOBAs. Right. And so for these people to come out and just start ripping it because they don't, they can't get their titillating fantasies out uh, in the Western version of this is just a little ridiculous. And that's another thing, too, is I just I don't understand what I guess the argument there isn't isn't probably not necessarily supposed to be about breasts. It's supposed to be about the fact that they're covering them up because they feel pressure. Yeah, they they think that this company feels pressure in some way to not portray women in in this manner. And so they are revolting against that, you know, Mm -hmm. Um. But in reality, I just I kind of sit back. I'm like, you got to pick your battles. And this just doesn't seem like one that's that important. And if it's that, you know, for the kids that are like, look, I wanted to see those titties. I just think there's other sites you can go to. Yeah, definitely. One or outside. Twitch.tv. Is or one you of actually them. touch them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to our bad for the week. A dab on them haters from DA Games released January 16th, 2018. Dab on them haters is a simple but captivating time killer. Like, like, write comments and earn money. Dab means comments and also earn money. <laughs> what could be better? Nothing. Dab on the haters. <laughs> what do you think about this game? So this is funny to me because it actually goes really well with Hyper Universe. If someone was to look at the, the, if someone was to look at the drama going on with Hyper Universe and say, wow, I'm going to make a game about censorship and I'm just going to be a person and then I'm going to cover up boobs and that's going to be the game. And then people are going to get really mad at me and they're going to slap me. Like that could be a game we could make about Hyper Universe. This mm-hmm. is a, this game, um, Dab on them Haters is specifically um, involving um, internet celebrity. And if you if you check out the main character for it, it's this blonde guy at his computer just, you know, mm-hmm. making making that money by vlogging um, and dabbing and getting a lot of hate for it. <laughs> um, and this person's basically um, Logan Paul, which yeah. is a he's a huge YouTuber, has gone through a lot of drama lately. And so at some point, this person was like, wow, this is some drama. I can make a game about this. And they must have spit it out in two weeks because the, the, all the drama happened two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. They, they're they on top of it. If you look at the art in this game, you can definitely tell they spent time getting this one out the door. And I, for one, even though I hate it, I'm in, I'm, I'm in love with the fact that the word dab and dab on haters just crosses... <laughs> Um, cultural barriers you know this is a russian game <laughs> made by <laughs> russians for russians and still these russians are dabbing on the haters mm-hmm. i love it i can't get yeah. enough of it um you'll dab good comments and like mean comments <laughs> um it's all gonna end up pretty soon you get evicted you'll fall into oblivion you'll end up your life under the bridge internet fame is a tricky thing you know so yeah you're basically taking on the personality of an internet celebrity and you got a dab or you got a uh, like and you're just trying to combat against 
the internet hating on you. What an awful game. Don't buy it. Two Do dollar. <laughs> Do not buy that game. Get the good one that's for free. Mm -hmm. uh, the next game is our indie game for the week, Inner Space. Inner Space is a exploration flying game set in the Interverse, a world of inside out planets with no horizons. Soar through the ancient skies and abandoned oceans to discover the lost history of this fading realm where gods still wander. Your greatest journey is within. What's your uh, initial thoughts on Inner Space? Uh, this game looks amazing. It also looks like it might blind you if you play it for too long. The colors are a little bright in it in, on occasion mm -hmm. um, and kind of glowy. Yeah. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, but the game itself just seems, I don't know. I, I'm really intrigued by it. Um, it's an exploration game, a flight exploration game. And there is a little bit of story um because you are going through this inverse um to help an archaeologist uh, recover the remaining memories some remaining memories before they're lost forever uh i just love environmental focused games like this yep. uh i love peaceful games the music sounds amazing yeah and i think as far as an indie this is this is really solid. Um, it is a little bit higher on the, the price point, though. It's priced at $20. And so it really does, I do feel like it needs to deliver mm -hmm. um, in order to be able to, for people to say, okay, that, that price point worked for me. Um, but it's one that I'm, I'm interested enough in checking out um, that I, I'm, I actually may stream this. Really? Yeah. Can't wait to see it because I'm really intrigued with the idea of it. But to kind of circle back to the art, like the the color palettes in this game are just absolutely like beautiful. You can really see the inspiration they took from the new Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. Um, it has a lot of that inside of there, a lot of the way they use the lightings on the monsters and stuff. Uh, but I fell in love with these developers, I swear to God, in one sentence. And let me really the, read the developer note. Uh, we started... We started Polynite Games back in college when we would meet after class to talk about new challenges in game design. We became fixated on one question in particular. What would a flying game be like in a universe of inside-out planets? To answer that question, we decided to put aside our career plans and form our own indie studio. <laughs> How do you not love these dudes? How do you not just like want to like buy their game right now? Like That's what it's all about when it comes to indie. Like They have one idea and they want to answer it, and so they just go and make a game. About yeah. that. that is like, I wish, I wish at the age of like, you know, 18 to 20 or whenever these guys are doing this, that I kind of had that um, idea in my head and that like, let's just go do that. Your, your one thing. Yeah. Like this one idea that you obsess about and then you just go do it and that's it. And these guys have done it with inner space and you know, the, the flying exploration genre is kind of starting to get around there. And spin mm -hmm. around, it's been done a little bit. And then they kind of have this fresh take on it. Well, this is Inside Out Planet. Yeah, that's intriguing and awesome. And I want to see it. And I want to play it. And I want to live in their world. What What were your goals at 18? <sighs> Smoking weed, getting girls. <laughs> that's yeah, it. That's it? In that order. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, oh, man. Life goals, <clears throat> no. Um yeah, I think I barely got through high school and I just kind of started partying and working. I didn't really like set goals for myself. I didn't sit around with intelligent people and ask like questions like that, you know? Yeah, I actually, when I started college, didn't even know what a major was. <laughs> I went to my I went to my my counseling session with my guidance counselor and she said, well, what's your major going to be? And I said, uh, what's that? <laughs> and she, must have, she just must have thought this girl has no, it's not going to happen for her. Yeah. And um, I was going to community college too, so just a two-year. Don't worry. And, That's how we all started and, out. And I, I go, she goes, well, what do you, what do you like doing? like oh man well I like 
I like reading. I like writing. <laughs> I like drawing. She goes, are you good at drawing? I'm like, I'm okay at it. She goes, okay. I'm like, you know, I like this. And then she goes, oh, you're an English major. And I swear to God, I just took that like it was like the giver. Mm-hmm. And I had been given my like my <laughs> role in life. And this was now who I was going to be. I was going to go through school. I would learn the English. I would write the English. I would read the English. And I would just do what college told me because this is what my counselor said my major was. You should have been a Russian I major. <laughs> I do the college. <laughs> I do this. Um, but yeah, I had no clue um, what I wanted to do at mm-hmm. all, except for, you know, play God of War. Really. <laughs> all right. The 44th episode, I would like to go back and get a tally of how many times God of War has came up. <laughs> I love God I know you do. Love whatever. Yes, I know. Okay. I just feel passionate about it. You're making... You, those listening can't see it, but I got a bun on the top of my head. And I'm wagging my head around oh, enough that I look like you're in a Dr. Seuss like movie. Floppy. Yeah. No, don't <laughs> uh, I'm not even saying like it's a bad thing. I just, I don't think I've talked about one game in my life as much as you brought up God of War in the past year. Like you love that game. And I wish I, had I that did love it. I did. I, I still love it. And I used to have, very complicated dreams about Kratos. Dude, you've got to stream the new one when it comes out. Like, I just, that's all I want to see. I know. <laughs> He's aged like I have. <laughs> uh, just a couple of old dogs going through. All right. I think that's going to do it for episode 44 of the Backspace Nomad. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for listening to us. If you want to check us out and engage with us, you can go to BackspaceNomads.com or Twitter at Backspace Nomads. And that's going to do it. If you're on uh, iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, rate, review, and subscribe. is the best way to support us. And we'll see you guys on episode 45. Later, Nomads. Bye. That was short.